Hi, this is Lara at Elliott Wave Stock Market with your daily analysis for the S&P 500 for the trading session dated Thursday 26th of July. I'm recording this video quarter past six in the evening New York time on the 26th. Here's our daily chart. We have a five down and a double three up. Still probably complete even though price has very firmly re-entered this parallel channel. We do still have a full daily candlestick below this channel and not touching it. So this is probably a first wave down and we're looking at a typically deep second wave correction which can't move beyond the start of the first wave. This wave count is invalidated with movement above 1380.39. Our long to mid term target for 3 black about a couple of months away is 1129 where it will reach 1.618 the length of 1 black. Eventually, when we have price movement below this point, 1325.41, probably next week, we may have more confidence in this wave count. Taking you now to the hourly chart, I have two for you today, where the high for two black up here is this point up here. Here's our five down, most likely a five down for a first wave. It can also be seen as a zigzag. And that's why I have that extra confidence point really on the daily chart. But it's most easily seen as a 5, it fits really well as a 5, and this so far fits really well as a 3. Yesterday I had this labelled A, B, with a slightly truncated C wave. That was not the C wave, that was just wave 1 of the C wave. With price movement above this point, we expected that the second wave correction obviously was not over, and at that stage we expected price to most likely reach to about the 0.618 Fibonacci ratio of wave 1 green down, which is what it's done. We've got a nice overshoot of this ratio so far. On the 5 and on the 1 minute chart, when I look really carefully at the structure here for this final 5th wave, I don't think it's complete here. The subdivisions just don't work. I think we're pretty likely to see tomorrow's session starting with one final little upwards movement before we have two green in its entirety complete. At 1364, wave 5 purple would reach a quality in length with wave 1 purple. I've drawn a couple of channels here. First we could probably use this one. It's drawn using Elliott's second technique with a trend line from 2 to 4 and a copy on 3 but then I've pushed out this lower trend line to touch the outer edge of this candle to better contain all this upwards movement. When this smaller channel is breached with downwards movement probably early in tomorrow's session, if that's the case, we can have a little bit of confidence that this upwards movement would be over and the next move down would then be underway. When price moves back into wave A, orange price territory, we can eliminate a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's another important price point to look out for tomorrow. And finally, if price moves below this less steeply sloping channel that contains the whole well, contains the early part of the zigzag for two green. This one's drawn using Elliott's technique for a correction. When price breaches this channel to the downside, then we'll have confirmation that the zigzag up was over and the next move down was underway. But I would be using this price point as a pretty strong indication that this upwards movement would then have to have been a three, because at that stage, downwards movement can't just be a fourth wave correction. So tomorrow I'm expecting a small piece of upwards movement to finish this, finish this structure for 5 purple on the 5 minute chart and then a trend change to the downside and most likely the start of a third wave. This main hourly wave count I think today has a higher probability than the alternate because it sees wave 2 green as the most common structure for a second wave, a simple zigzag and it sees it ending at the most common place for a second wave to end, and it would be nicely in proportion to wave 1 green down. However, if we move the degree of labelling within the zigzag down 1 degree, then we have to accept the possibility that wave 2 green may not be over, and it may be continuing further sideways for another 2 or 3 sessions as a flat correction. 
So we'd have a zigzag up for the A wave still. I think we need the final little thrust for the final fifth wave. And then we'd have a three down for the B wave, which for a flat must be 90% the length of A. And then we'd have a five up for a C wave. Or two green could be a combination correction with an ABC zigzag for the first structure in a double, a three down for an X wave, and then another corrective structure probably a flat, less likely a triangle, for the second in a double. So that idea also is encompassed in this alternate wave count. The main thing to realise with this one is it's also requiring quite a bit of downwards movement tomorrow after a short little upwards thrust for the final fifth wave is very likely. And then this one expects downwards movement probably to be at least 90% the length of however long wave A orange was. So both my wave counts tomorrow have no divergence in what direction I am expecting price to move in tomorrow. It's the structure that we again have to pay really close attention to. If downwards movement is choppy, overlapping and hesitant and it subdivides as a 3 where it has a corrective wave count of 3, 7, 11, etc. on the 5 minute chart, then strongly consider this alternate. However, what's more likely tomorrow is downwards movement should be strong, impulsive, and have an impulsive wave count of 5, 9, etc. on the 5 minute chart. So I'm expecting one small upwards thrust is very likely to start tomorrow's session and after that I'm expecting price to move lower tomorrow. I'm expecting it's most likely that that downwards movement that we should see tomorrow should be the start of a third wave. That's all for me today with your SP analysis and I hope that members are all looking forward to a fabulous weekend.